The reason why I'm going to add this next is that I keep knocking this area. So I hope that's going to stay put. Now for this part, I had to actually look at photographs to see which way around this went. The inner ring is a bit tricky here. It just has one attachment point. I had to be very careful here. I didn't get capillary action with the glue. In the end, I ended up using PVA glue on a couple of points inside. Safer. Then the bomb site housing. These are all parts added to the glazed areas. Just one point to note is the vagueness of some of the location of some of these parts. Add them where you want, it seems. This part will be the first to add. Not a bad fit. Which of these three parts should I glue next? These two. So let's glue these together. So with the glaze nose fully dry and after some test fitting found that the mag bracket was clashing with the bomb aimers opening. After a lot of faff of removing the bracket and then ended up gluing the mags on their own. It would have been easier just to bin the whole idea. But the fit is far better now. Before gluing this to the fuselage I thought I'd fix the small gaps on the join. Easy to do this while it's off. I've added paint on the joint to see the gaps a lot easier and then these will be filled in with Vallejo putty. The upper wings are a nice fit. So next I need to be coming up with the main colours for the 111. Now many of you will just order the relevant RLM colours, but because I'm confident, ha, I can create these RLM colours using Tamiya paints, that's what I'm going to do. Stop laughing. So I've sprayed a couple of Tamiya colours straight from the pot on some plastic. This just gives me a good idea if the colour looks okay when the paint's dry or whether I need to add something to them. First is XF27, XF81, XF65, XF62, and then this last one is a mix of XF62 with XF49, a ratio of one to one. So I think I'm gonna go for the XF27 maybe with a little black added to it. And then the other green, I think it's gonna be a 62-49 mix. As I said, a ratio of one to one. For the RLM 65, I'm using my trusted XF23 mix with white. So now that I'm happy I've got my RLM colors ready, I'm gonna start with the cowls next. Now these are a real jigsaw puzzle, not for the faint hearted. You can see I've added some paint to some of the areas already, especially to those hard to get areas. I think, I don't know until it's built up whether they are or not, just plain safe. The exhaust, I'll have to paint before fixing them to the cowls and then to the wing. Mustn't forget the backing plate here as it locates the prop later. I've also had to widen the radiator flaps for the strip of plastic, excuse the thumb. Looks far better now without those large gaps either side. Now I could have made a full video on the whole cowl assembly, but this video will be long enough. I've let the glue set a little before adding the top part, just using this part as a jig. This part didn't make any sense to me, so I didn't use it. I can't fathom it out. It may make sense later on. Now they instruct you to add the cow part assembly to the wing and then add these side parts. But I'm going to add these side parts to the cow assembly first. I'm just dry fitting the radiator to test if it fits the side parts. This can act as a jig now. So with the cowl assembly dry, I was going to fit the exhaust next and then fit the assembly to the wing. But looking at it, I should have enough space to place the exhaust through the front here, 
which means I can leave them out and then add them at the very end along with the spinner part. So not the best fit, has that plated look, but I can live with that. Now to add that inner wing assembly to the fuselage. This ended up being a butt clenching time. The number of times I've had this wing off the fuselage and those creaking sounds of plastic. You know that creaking sound when it's ready to snap? I was worried about creating more problems. So once I did get it to fit, I left it. These gaps should close up. One of the issues I had was round here. I ended up trimming up quite a bit of plastic off the fuselage side. So all trussed up, not the best way as this plastic is under pressure. I will see what happens once that tape is released. Now the outer wings are next and I did add one of them. Now I missed the trick here and should have added the masks first before adding the outer wing. So before I add the other wing to the other side, I'll add the masks. So I've used Montex masks before and found these fitted very well. I've never had any issues with them. Before I spray AK's Extreme Metal paint to the surface, I'm going to apply the interior colour around all the glaze parts. So this is all I need. I don't know why I didn't spot it earlier, but I found that one of the wings, the dihedral, is wrong. It's too much. I thought I was seeing things. Kept coming back to it, hoping that I didn't see it, but it was there. This is very annoying, really annoying, as all the wing parts fitted so well. So I've jumped straight in and cut the wing away from the wing root. No easy task keeping this cut clean and straight. Then by adding some shims in the gap, and you can see the thickness, all it took to fix this dihedral, not much. So while the filler in that gap is drying, I'll tackle the other issue, the MG15s. They are appalling. They look like the sort of thing you may find in an old frog kit way back when. There are some very good aftermarket replacements out there, but because I'm cheap as chips, I thought I'd try and make my own. Using this old Tamiya set, and some of the kit's parts. So using the MG34 as a start, now I know the barrel has holes in it rather than the slots, but it's the closest match I could get in this Tamiya set. I do have the MG42 slotted barrel, but it's squared, and that's no good. So I've cleaned up the collars and bipod on this gun, on the Tamiya part. The sight, which I may or may not use later on, as it looks very crude at the moment, so I'm going to cut the kit part off here and then the Tamiya kit part off around here. The bits left over and the generic M15s. They should look okay after some paint and being highlighted. So back to the main subject and I've masked off all the relevant areas and I've applied AK's Extreme Metal. This is so that when I scratch off the next layer of paint added Hopefully it will reveal the underneath silver paint. So before I add my XF23 mix, I'm going to add a lighter color of that mix. Then I will add my custom mix on top of that. This is so that when I sand through, I'll get a light color of this mix underneath, hopefully. I do hate masking with a passion and I hope I've covered everything. Next is the RLM 71 mix. From this, I've made a lighter version and I'm gonna do the same process as I did with the blue underneath. I've also decided to pencil on the splinter demarcation, just saves my neck. So with a lighter RLM 71 added, I can now add the darker mix. Once I've done that, I can then scratch through the paint and hopefully pick out that silver underneath while the paint is still soft. More masking. Oh, this was a tedious task. Now I made a boo-boo here and added more XF49 to that final dark mix because I thought the colour looked too bright. It's only when I start to peel back the masking that I wish I hadn't because the colour looked too light. Never mind, maybe when I come to do the dark wash, it will help.
The last thing I'm going to do before I start sanding the surface is pick out some panel lines with some lighter shades of Tamiya mixes. So with the paint thoroughly dry, I'll wet sand the surface. This technique takes practice and there is a video on this on my channel. And you can see, hopefully through the camera, the patina that the sanding gives you. Also, there'll be no varnishes applied to this model at all at any stage. The paint's going to be left bare. Now I apply masking uh, markings with caution here. With decals, there's a bit of give, a bit of play time to get them into the right position. But with mask, you get one go at it. You get the position wrong and you've got a lot of work ahead of you to correct it. So I'm spending quite a bit of time making sure I'm getting these masks in the right position. To make things easy, I use the panel lines as a guide as much as possible. So the white is added. And then I'm masking off, ready for the black. Now in hindsight, I should have applied the black first and then the white. I keep forgetting. Once these are thoroughly dry, I'll give them a very light wet sand just to flatten them down. The props, dark green blades, the spinners have a satin black coat on them over a silver base. Last thing I'm doing here is to mark the blades with a toothpick. Need to add the quinta set to the top of the gunner's assembly. And then we'll add the gun at the very end. Now this 3D decal proved difficult for me to get the straps to bend and stay in place. In the end, I ended up copying the decal and using a paper copy instead. Glued on with PVA glue. I didn't have to worry about the white on the side as nobody's going to see that. Next I'm going to apply some of the smaller decals from the kit. The biggest one I think is going to be the emblem. Now I used Microsol here and the decals went down with no issue. Flawless. Next is a Floyd's Dark Dirt panel wash. Grime time. So you can see here I've taped up the parts, the bomb doors and the undercarriage doors. Then we're going to apply these to the relevant areas. The reason for this, it just helps when it comes to adding the grime to the undersurfaces. I've got these parts in place as well. Just makes the job a lot easier. Do everything in one go. Now that Heinkel also had some very big smoke stains either side here and here and ended up at the rear tail too. But I don't want to go too realistic here. I think it will be too distracting on this model, even as big as it is. So I'm going to have a go at indicating the smoke stains using pastels first and then I may consider oils later. So I just want to give a little life to the undersurface here. Once again, not going overboard. I'm using a small amount of odorless white spirits over the surface and I've applied this very lightly, not much is needed at all. Then with the smallest amount of oil, this is dabbed on in tiny bits here and there and then blended in. It doesn't take much oil to make a mess. So another issue, uh, I knew I'd do it. I made a purpose-built rear tail protection 
and as soon as I take it off, I ended up breaking the actual rear tail. So I've tried to fix it as best I can because it's quite a complicated shape this. But the bigger issue is will it take the strain with that model sitting on it. Adding the undercarriage next and a lot of head scratching here. The illustration seems to say place the left part on the right side and the right part on the left side. Yes, of course I will. So ignoring the illustrations to a point and taking them with a large pinch of salt, I've glued this part to the back of the wall first and then the main gear to the front wall and then connected them both. Then I've added this part next. Now I'll add the two brackets, feeling confident that they go there. And then finally the central strut. The bombs are being glued in with PVA glue. Then I'm adding the cut up bomb doors, which should look more interesting than the kit's single pieces. Now I'm adding the smoke stains with black pastel. I think I'm going to not bother with the oils. I think it'd be too overbearing as realistic as that might be. Now let's see if these exhausts will be easy to fit inside. I never had any doubt, honest. So with a major work underneath all finished, I can tackle the top sides now, which should be a lot more easier as there's very little there to do. I'm still toying with the idea of adding exhaust stains with pastels on the top wing. I should do really, but something in my head says no. So just the guns to add along with the control surfaces and then I'm all done. And then I'll take some final photographs. Now this is an easy build. I struggled with this. I suppose because it's such a big kit and it's a Reval one. But in the end, it's a very impressive bird. It's one of the kits I think I might take the undercarriage legs off, fold away the doors and hang it from the ceiling. I think it would look very good. So I hope you've enjoyed the build and I want to thank you for watching and I do hope to see you for the next video.